NASA has stated that now is the perfect moment to direct attention toward Venus, following new revelations about the potential for life on the planet. If you were to look back at NASA's records from the 1960s, you would see that the agency referred to Venus as a planet from hell. Meanwhile, Mars had emerged as a more promising target for exploration. Such harsh labeling of distant planets was not unusual during the intense space race era. The Soviet Union was also deeply involved in sending costly missions to Venus, a planet that seemed almost devoid of any potential for life. Nevertheless, the Soviet space program didn't abandon its Venera missions until the collapse of the Soviet Empire. Thanks to astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson, we finally understand the reasons behind their fascination. Join us as we delve into the declassified images from Venus captured by the Soviet Union. The collapse of the Soviet Union was significant in many respects. Not only did it alter the global political landscape, but it also buried many secrets with it. The Soviet Union was known for its love of secrecy, from running one of the most sophisticated intelligence agencies in the world to keeping quiet about possible extraterrestrial encounters. As a result, the former superpower harbors many secrets. In truth, before the United States took the lead in planetary space exploration, the Soviet Union was at the forefront of the space race. While the USSR's space program included both successes and failures, its primary focus was always on Venus, the mysterious and hostile planet. In Russian, Venus is known as Venera, which also became the name of the Soviet mission that spanned from 1961 to 1983. This occurred during the same period that the United States was focused on its efforts to reach the moon. The Soviets strategically chose to allocate their resources elsewhere during the space race. It's not entirely strange that the Soviet Union placed so much emphasis on Venus. Were they possibly looking at the planet as a potential military installation? Or were they perhaps interested in colonizing it after investigating any possible life forms? The true motivations behind their fixation on the planet remain unclear. As the Soviet Union was deeply embroiled in the Cold War, their objectives were not openly disclosed. In fact, much of what we know about the Soviet missions to Venus comes from declassified or unarchived documents, and even then, it's challenging to pinpoint the specific reasons behind their relentless efforts. The Soviets didn't just land on Venus once, twice, or even three times. In total, they launched 28 costly rockets aimed at the planet, with 13 entering Venus's atmosphere. Of those, eight missions successfully landed. These ambitious and complex missions positioned the Soviet Union at the forefront of space exploration. The United States, although a close competitor, was more focused on satellite technology and innovative infrastructure, while the Soviets were committed to investigating the possibility of life on distant planets. Their fascination with Venus was rooted in their pursuit of scientific discovery and technological dominance. Most history books might not tell you this, but the Soviet space program was the first to send a probe into the atmosphere of a planet beyond Earth. It also became the first country to achieve a soft landing on another planet. The USSR was the first to send back images and sound recordings from another planet's surface. While these accomplishments are often overshadowed by later American achievements, they were groundbreaking milestones in space exploration. In 1992, the Soviet Space Agency was formally disbanded following the dissolution of the USSR, and it was later resurrected under the new Russian name Roscosmos. Much of the historical records were either lost or destroyed during this transition, which is why many aspects of the Soviet space program remain shrouded in mystery. Although we may never know for certain why the Soviets launched so many spacecraft into Venus's atmosphere, it's likely that their decision was influenced more by cost-effectiveness than scientific curiosity. While the Soviet Union was undeniably interested in exploring Venus, they were also looking for the presence of water, solar radiation, and other environmental characteristics. Without these missions, it would have been difficult for scientists to understand Venus's extreme temperatures and dense atmosphere. Today, many cosmologists still argue that Venus is too inhospitable to support life. With temperatures high enough to melt lead and an atmosphere thick with carbon dioxide, it's easy to dismiss the idea of life existing on Venus. However, to ignore the pioneering contributions of the Soviet space program is to erase an important chapter of history. For the Soviets, Venus was worth investigating, even if only to fuel the space race. 
investigating planets like Mars was not completely off the table, but it was a far more expensive endeavor than launching missions to Venus. The vast distance between Earth and other celestial bodies was a key factor in determining where to focus resources. Venus, on average, is only 40 million kilometers away from Earth, while Mars is about 250 million kilometers away. This dramatic difference in distance accounts for the high costs associated with Mars exploration. Additionally, the United States' global economic dominance made investigating Mars more feasible for them than for the Soviet Union. Some reports suggest that Soviet missions to Venus were unreliable and suffered significant technical shortcomings. Many of their spacecraft were not designed to cover vast interplanetary distances, and there were numerous instances of lost communication with rockets. Given these challenges, it makes sense that the Soviet space program would choose a mission to a nearer planet that offered a greater likelihood of success. However, to focus only on the technical difficulties would leave out the larger story behind the Venera missions. At the time the Soviet program began launching missions to Venus, the United States was still largely fixated on reaching the moon. NASA's Venus missions in the 1960s were plagued by failures, leading to a phenomenon known as the Venus Curse. Every time NASA launched a probe toward Venus, it ended in disaster. This is when the Soviet Union saw an opportunity to take advantage of the American failures and win a significant victory in the space race. The Soviets capitalized on NASA's struggles, intensifying their efforts to explore Venus. They viewed Venus as a key milestone in the space race, a planet that the United States had neglected. Despite their limited resources, the Soviets persisted, launching a series of successful missions to Venus. In contrast, NASA's focus on the moon led to a divergence in the two countries' space programs, with both sides eager to outdo the other. The label Hellish Planet was attached to Venus in popular media, a term often used by the United States to downplay the Soviet achievements. This negative image of Venus didn't deter the Soviet space program. Their goal was to prove their superiority over the United States. Even though the Soviet Union's missions to Venus are not as widely recognized today, they were highly ambitious and advanced. For their time, the Venera missions marked the dawn of the space age. Starting in the 1950s, the Soviets began developing the technology to send spacecraft to Venus. Over the next 30 years, they built and launched a series of interplanetary probes as part of the Venera program. Throughout this period, the Soviet Union optimized its resources, making significant strides in space exploration. By the mid-1960s, the Soviet Union had advanced far enough to launch Venera 3, the first artificial probe to enter Venus's atmosphere and successfully make contact with the planet's surface. This achievement intensified the space race between the two superpowers. Unlike the United States' often disastrous missions to Venus, the Soviet program continued to make progress, despite several technical setbacks. The USSR's ability to design and launch increasingly sophisticated rockets allowed them to continue making headway, even as NASA struggled with its Venus missions. In the 1970s, the Soviets launched two probes, Venera 4 and Venera 5, in what is considered one of the most exciting decades in space exploration. These dual launches allowed the Soviets to gather data from the Venusian atmosphere and surface. Venera 4's success led to the continued development of more advanced spacecraft, including Venera 5, which was designed to collect unique data about Venus's conditions. The 1970s saw the Soviet Union enter the most advanced phase of the Venera missions. Venera 7, launched in 1970, was the first spacecraft to transmit data from another planet's surface, providing vital information about Venus's temperature and pressure. Later missions, such as Venera 13, captured color panoramic photographs of the planet's surface, offering unprecedented insights into Venus's geology. Despite some setbacks and failures, the Venera missions were crucial in expanding our understanding of Venus and space exploration in general. In the 1980s, the Soviet Union's Venera 13 surpassed previous missions in complexity, capturing detailed images of the planet's surface. By the time the Soviet Union ceased operations in the early 1990s, the Venera program had accomplished far more than anyone had expected. The legacy of the Venera missions lives on today, as Roscosmos and NASA prepare for the joint Venerity mission, scheduled for the late 2020s or early 2030s. This new mission aims to investigate Venus's atmosphere, geology, and history, 
in hopes of uncovering signs of past or present habitability. The Venera missions paved the way for future missions to Venus, Mars, and beyond, and their achievements continue to shape the future of space exploration. The upcoming Venera D mission, a collaboration between Russia's Roscosmos and NASA, represents an exciting new chapter in the ongoing exploration of Venus. Set to launch in the late 2020s or early 2030s, this mission will focus on studying the planet's atmosphere, geological history, and potential signs of past or current habitability. The spacecraft will be equipped with an orbiter, a lander, and potentially an inflatable structure designed to explore Venus in unprecedented detail. The Venerity mission not only aims to expand our understanding of Venus, but also highlights the enduring legacy of the Soviet-era Venera program, which remains one of the most ambitious and significant space exploration efforts ever undertaken. As we look to the future, the lessons learned from the Venera missions are still relevant to current and future planetary exploration missions. The technological advancements achieved by the Soviet space program, such as the development of durable materials capable of withstanding extreme temperatures and pressure, have been essential for subsequent missions to Venus, Mars, and other planets in our solar system. These innovations in spacecraft design and instrumentation laid the groundwork for modern space exploration and continue to inform mission planning, technology development, and operational strategies. The Venera program's impact extends beyond the scientific and technological realms. During the Cold War, the space race was not only a battle of scientific achievement but also a means of asserting ideological superiority. For the Soviet Union, achieving success in the Venera missions was a demonstration of its technological prowess and an important marker in the competition with the United States. The global community closely followed these milestones, recognizing the Venera missions as a vital part of humanity's expanding understanding of the cosmos. Each success, such as Venera 7's soft landing on Venus in 1970, was not just a scientific victory. It was a powerful political statement. The success of the Soviet Venera missions was not without its challenges, however. Operating in Venus's hostile environment presented enormous technical hurdles, including extreme temperatures reaching up to 450 degrees Celsius, 842 degrees Fahrenheit, intense atmospheric pressure, and a thick, corrosive atmosphere composed primarily of sulfuric acid clouds. These conditions made it extremely difficult for spacecraft to survive long enough to collect meaningful data. Despite these obstacles, the perseverance and ingenuity of Soviet scientists and engineers were key to overcoming these challenges, allowing for the successful collection of crucial data about Venus's surface and atmosphere. The achievements of the Venera missions were instrumental in our understanding of Venus's inhospitable conditions from its scorching surface temperatures to its dense, toxic atmosphere. These missions provided invaluable insights into the planet's extreme climate, which is dominated by carbon dioxide, as well as its geological features, including its volcanic plains and mountainous terrain. The panoramic images captured by later missions, such as Venera 13 and Venera 14, allowed scientists to further explore Venus's surface composition, shedding light on the planet's geological history and its potential for past volcanic activity. One of the most important contributions of the Venera missions was their ability to capture the first images of Venus's surface, providing a glimpse into a world previously shrouded in mystery. These photographs revealed a rugged and alien landscape, vastly different from anything found on Earth. The success of the Venera program demonstrated that, despite the planet's harsh environment, it was still possible to collect valuable scientific data pushing the boundaries of human knowledge and expanding our understanding of the solar system. However, not all missions were successful. Some of the Soviet spacecraft failed to reach Venus or experienced technical malfunctions that prevented them from transmitting data back to Earth. The challenges of operating in such an extreme environment, coupled with the technological limitations of the time, meant that some missions were unable to achieve their objectives. Nevertheless, the persistence of the Soviet space program in the face of these setbacks is a testament to the determination and resilience of the scientists and engineers involved in the Venera project. In addition to the technical achievements, the Venera missions also had significant geopolitical and cultural implications. The success of the Soviet Union's space program during the Cold War was a source of national pride and a symbol of the USSR's technological and ideological superiority. 
Each successful mission to Venus represented a victory not only in the realm of science but also in the broader ideological struggle between the Soviet Union and the United States. The space race was a battle for global influence, and the Venera missions played a central role in this competition. While the Soviet space program is often overshadowed by the accomplishments of NASA, the Venera missions remain a pivotal part of the history of space exploration. The technological innovations, scientific discoveries, and political implications of the Venera missions have had a lasting impact on our understanding of Venus and space exploration in general. These missions demonstrated the potential for interplanetary travel and paved the way for future missions to Venus, Mars, and beyond. Looking ahead, the legacy of the Venera missions continues to inspire new generations of scientists, engineers, and explorers. The lessons learned from these missions, along with the advancements in technology and knowledge gained through decades of exploration, will guide future missions to Venus and other distant worlds. As space agencies around the world continue to push the boundaries of exploration, the spirit of the Venera program, characterized by boldness, perseverance, and innovation, remains a guiding force in the ongoing quest to understand our solar system and the universe beyond.